Woo! Rock on, Globy! Today on Our World, we're gonna be learning about Lunar Rock. Actually, I'm not talking about music, but rather rock samples collected by NASA's trips to the moon. During NASA's Apollo missions, the crews brought back a staggering 382 kilograms of rock samples from the moon in a wide range of sizes. Some were as large as a football, while other samples were as fine as talcum powder. These little pieces of the moon are valuable samples that can teach us a lot about how the moon formed and how it has changed. So where does NASA keep all of these samples from the moon? Well, they built a special building to house the samples, the Lunar Sample Laboratory Facility at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The Lunar Sample Laboratory Facility provides a secure, controlled place for the lunar rocks to be stored. Keeping the lunar samples from being contaminated by earthly materials is important because these samples are still studied by scientists all over the world. In fact, the Lunar Sample Laboratory Facility is kind of like a library for moon rocks. These priceless lunar samples are checked out by scientists, carefully studied, then sent back to the facility. As you might imagine, sending moon samples around the world without getting them contaminated is a tough job. Our world traveled to NASA's Johnson Space Center to see where the lunar rocks are stored and who takes care of them. This facility was so clean that our crew had to wear special suits to keep from contaminating where the moon rocks are housed. My name is Andrea Mosey and I'm a principal scientist in the Lunar Sample Facility. On a daily basis, I work on moon rocks. Yeah. We house the rocks that were brought back from the six Apollo missions. We actually curate them here at Johnson Space Center in our Lunar Sample Facility. Ms. Mosey, I understand it's very important to keep the lunar samples pure so that they can be accurately studied by scientists. So, how do you store them? Samples are protected by being in these glove boxes. It's a very pure type nitrogen that's used in the glove box. We don't touch the samples except with the tools that we have, which are stainless steel, aluminum, Teflon, or with a Teflon glove. We're in the business of protecting these precious gems, which are from the moon, from all earthly type materials. So, storing moon rocks in nitrogen gas and only touching them with certain materials helps keep them pure. Okay. Well, Ms. Mosey, would you mind showing us what a moon rock looks like? In this particular cabinet, there's a Apollo 16 sample that we call Big Muley. This sample was collected by the Apollo 16 astronauts. It was about a football-sized sample, and you can see that it has been cut with our bandsaw. No oils or lubricants are used because that would contaminate the sample. This rock also had a large white crystalline top, and you can actually see part of it that's still protruding right here. It also has features on here that we call zap pits. These pits are caused when meteorites strike the surface of the moon, the ejector is thrown up, and when it comes down, it makes these tiny little craters, and we call them zap pits. You won't find any zap pits on rocks on Earth because of our atmosphere. When samples come into our atmosphere, they either burn up before entering our atmosphere, or they come in as very small pieces. Wow, it's amazing how much the moon can teach us about our own planet. Thanks, Miss Mosey. So, the next time you look up at the moon, think about lunar rock. Yeah! Thank you, Cleveland. Long live Lunar Rock.